week 44, day one. And now we see yet another hinge point. Jesus going into Jerusalem. We're starting that final week leading up to the crucifixion. And so here on day one, and it's a lot to say, Matthew 21, verses 1 through 22, and chapter 26, verses 6 through 13. Mark, chapter 11, 1 through 26, and chapter 14, verses 3 through 9. Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 through 48, and John, chapter 2, verses 13 through 25, and chapters 11, verse 55, through chapter 12, verse 36. Whew, a lot of jumping around. But we're going to see a couple of events in particular. One, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Uh, his anointing at Bethany, as well as the cleansing of the temple. Now, something to keep in mind, and even though each of the writers includes one or more of these events, and that's why we're reading from more of all four Gospels today, uh, that they will arrange the events in different order, because their emphasis is on its importance to the message that they're trying to convey about Jesus more so than the chronology. Now remember that the Gospels are not biographies as we understand from a 21st century perspective. Um, that kind of biography had not been uh, developed yet in literature, but rather these are more like uh, what, have, what has once been called a campaign biography. And so we're putting Jesus there as our uh, the leader that we think you should vote for, follow, etc. And so we're going to tell you the things that we want you to know about him, uh, to emphasize his uh, his uh, deity, uh, his loving kindness, whatever it may be. And so the order may be a little bit different, but that doesn't mean that the events didn't take place. Um, it's just a difference of, of, of uh, emphasis. Now, when we're talking about the triumphal entry into, G into Jerusalem, this is something that was foreshadowed by the prophet Zechariah, specifically in chapter 9, verse 9. So we're getting uh, to see again, particularly when we see this in Matthew, where Matthew and the others are ascribing that this has been predicted. Uh, this was prophesied. And so Jesus is living into that prophesy prophecy that he is the Messiah. Um, with regarding the cleansing of the temple, you know, we had previously, when we were talking about Jesus as the good shepherd, we said that, you know, um, people, leaders of, uh, human leaders were often called shepherds of God's people, but not all of them were good shepherds. And so here again, Isaiah 56 verse seven and Jeremiah seven verse 11, um, emphasizes how human leaders could become corrupt. And we see that as a focus and even pointing the finger at those who are in Jerusalem at the time of Jesus's ministry. And so all of this, all of this pageantry that goes on during Holy Week is Jesus acting out a message of judgment against those who were holding on to the temple. Now, a fascinating thing to keep in mind is that the temple had within it a room known as the Holy of Holies. And um, previous, uh, prior to the exile in Babylon, it was where the Ark of the Covenant would sit, which was God's throne and God's glory, God's Shekinah uh, uh, glory would um, exist in that room. Well, after the uh, return from exile, Never again are we to see that God's glory is in the Holy of Holies. And so what a um, sad, uh, tragic, uh, but ironic twist of fate that the leaders of Jerusalem, the leaders of the Jews, those who are the priests in the temple who are continuing the rituals that were founded originally with Moses um, as the way to reach God, to approach God, are praying and sacrificing to an empty room, and yet they are in direct opposition, angry with Jesus, who is Emmanuel, God with us. And so they continue old rituals, old habits, in order to pray and make sacrifices to an empty space, rather than recognizing God in their midst. Do you know God is in your midst today? If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, 
Jesus has also promised to you indwelling by the Holy Spirit to guide your paths, to answer your questions, to be your advocate before the Most Holy God. Have you recognized, have you thanked God for offering that gift of God's presence with you all the time, everywhere? Not an empty building, but God himself in you.